Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the future of rapid transit in Toronto. We made a similar video over a year ago, and since our production quality and insights have improved, we thought it was time for a remake. In addition to rapid transit lines, this video is also going to discuss the locations of the primary rail yards in the city's transit network, as well as do an in-depth look at the exciting expansions coming to the streetcar network. Before we get started, I've got to give a shout out to our latest patrons, Dania and Benjamin. Of course, if you haven't already, click subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss our future videos. Now let's start by taking a look at the TTC's existing rapid transit lines. First off, we have Line 1, which is of course Toronto's primary subway line. It connects downtown Toronto to the suburbs of North York and Vaughan along a 38 stop route. In addition, since the line is a U-shaped, it covers two north-south corridors within the city. Line 1 carries more than 700,000 riders every day, which is more than the entire rapid transit networks of Vancouver and Calgary combined. Second, we have Line 2, which serves the East-West Bloor-Danforth Corridor, Toronto's primary East-West link. Line 2 connects downtown Toronto to the suburbs of Etobicoke and Scarborough along a 31-station route. Since we're talking about ridership for existing lines, Line 2 carries over 500,000 riders every day which is more than LA's entire metro system. Now third, we have Line 3, or the Scarborough RT. This relatively short 6km line connects 6 stations between Kennedy Station and McAllen Station in central Scarborough. The Scarborough RT is on its final legs and will be removed once Line 2 can be extended to Scarborough Centre. Next up is Line 4, which is the TTC's least used rapid transit line. This five-stop line is also six kilometers long and connects a young subway at Shepherd Avenue with Don Mills Station in eastern North York. Line 4 carries less people than the King Streetcar Line and most other respectable transit systems. Finally, as a bonus, we've added the Queen's Key Tunnel and Queen's Key Station. While some might argue that this is not a true rapid transit route, we think it deserves to be here. This short tunnel runs about half a kilometer and serves a nice underground station, which connects Union Station conveniently with office buildings at Queen's Quay, as well as the waterfront. Better still, this is technically the only subway in Toronto that runs 24 hours a day. Now to start getting into the future, or at least some under construction projects, we need to mention Go RER. We won't get into specifics besides to show how great the coverage of this network is, but really, we believe it plays an integral part in Toronto's future transit network. To find out more, consider checking out our video on the future of the GO network. Next up, we will discuss two under construction rapid transit lines. We'll also mention the new interchange points, the extensions, and the new lines from this point on. First up is the Eglinton Crosstown, or TTC Line 5, which opens in 2021. This 25 station light rail line will transform transportation from the eastern suburb of Scarborough through to Midtown Toronto. In addition, Line 5 will finally connect Line 1's east and west legs north of Bloor, providing critical redundancies. Line 5 will have a ton of new interchange stations including Kennedy, Eglinton, Eglinton West, Caledonia, and Mount Dennis. Finally, the last under construction line is the Finch West LRT, or TTC Line 6 which opens up in 2023. Line 6 is an 18 station light rail line which will connect Northern Etobicoke from Finch West Subway Station to Humber College. This light rail line will provide critical relief for one of the city's most congested bus routes as well as provide connections to regional transit operators at Humber College's large bus terminal. This line will be hugely beneficial to the numerous students at this Humber College campus which has been growing significantly in recent years. Now for this next section, we won't go into too many specific details, since the planned lines in Toronto have unfortunately long been under flux. We think the current provincial government's plans are relatively strong overall, and are relatively optimistic that they will be able to deliver the lines they have proposed. First up, we have the flagship Ontario Line. This line connects Exhibition Go Station to Osgood and Queen on Line 1. Following this, the line connects to the future East Harbour Go Station, which by the way, is not in Hamilton as well as the future Girard Go station while traveling along the Lakeshore East Corridor. 
After this, the line goes underground at Pape Avenue to serve Pape Station on Line 2 before continuing north to serve the transit deserts of Flemington and Thorncliffe Park before terminating at Science Sensor Station on Line 5. We particularly love the routing decisions on the Ontario line with all the GO and TTC connections, particularly at Exhibition and East Harbour, to potentially relieve Union Station in the future. We also like the choice of automated metro technology similar to Sydney Metro. Next up, we have the Scarborough Subway extension. This extension will replace Line 3, whose number will likely be taken by the Ontario line, extending Line 2 from Kennedy to Shepherd Avenue via Scarborough Centre. Following that, we will see an underground western extension of Line 5 from Mount Dennis, west along Eglinton to Ronforth Gateway on the Mississauga Transitway, then north to Pearson, where we will meet the Up Express. Of course, we will also see the Young Line extended from Finch Station to Richmond Hill Centre. This extension already makes a ton of sense given the massive number of buses using the corridor, however the extension will overload the Young Subway if the Ontario or Relief Line is not built first, so this extension is currently waiting for significant work to start on that line before it proceeds with construction. Finally, the government plans on extending Line 4 eastward to meet the extended Line 2, forming an eastern loop in the system, finally providing much better connection between North York and Scarborough. This line is controversial given the low ridership of the current Shepherd Subway, and while it, we would really like to see the Shepherd Subway extended westward to meet Line 1 at the Wilson Yard, an extension that we think would make serious logistical improvements for train deployment, we do think Line 4 needs to be extended as it's currently in a vicious cycle of not being attractive to use and hence having low ridership, which makes it unattractive to extend. Before closing out this section of the video, we'd love to draw your attention to all the rail yards on the TTC Rapid Transit system. Currently serving Line 1, we have the Davisville and Wilson yards, and an additional yard, the Richmond Hill yard, which will be added at the terminus of the Young Subway, Richmond Hill extension. This will be the TTC's first underground rail yard, an exciting detail. Next up, serving Line 2, we have the Greenwood Yard. With the extension of Line 2 further into Scarborough, as well as ATC, the line will need more trains than ever before. In addition, newer, long, open gantry trains such as the Toronto Rockets will require a reconfiguration of the Greenwood Yard. This necessitates the creation of a long-planned western yard on land the TTC owns near Kipling Station, named the Obico Yard. Line 3's relatively small fleet is serviced out of the McCowan Yard, and along with the SRT, this line will be removed once the line to extension into Scarborough is complete. The under construction Line 5 will have a major yard at the significant Mount Dennis Interchange Station. Line 6 will have a more modest yard due to its shorter length and lower frequencies at Norfinch and Oakdale near Jane and Finch. Of course, we can't forget the Ontario Line. While its yard is perhaps the least certain at present, we do know that it will likely go to on lands to the southwest of Science Centre Station on Line 5 at Donmills and Eglinton, its northern terminus. With all the currently planned lines on the map, and all these rail yards, our network really starts to look quite impressive. In addition, a lot of what you see here today is already underway, which is one thing that gets me very excited. Now, since we've gotten all the major rapid transit lines out of the way, it's time to talk streetcars. The current streetcar network densely covers the old city of Toronto with major routes along Roncesvalles, Bathurst, Spadina, and Broadview in the north-south direction, as well as major east-west routes along St. Clair, College, Dundas, Queen, King, and Queen's Quay. When you add in the rapid transit network on top, you realize that old Toronto is actually incredibly well served by streetcars and rail lines, many of which will have additional stations and services added in the future. Pay particular attention to the thicker streetcar lines which indicate priority operations as with the King Street streetcar project. Note the two-tone lines which indicate LRT-like streetcar routes with their own lanes. For Toronto's future streetcar lines which are currently being planned by the city, we have a lot to look forward to. Note that since the streetcar routings are flexible, we're avoiding mentioning particular services and will be focusing on the actual infrastructure for this video. First, the current Queen's Key line will be reconfigured at Queen's Key allowing for a streetcar extension eastward along Queen's Quay, serving the rapidly developing Eastern Harbour Front. This line stops at Cherry Street, where it meets an extended Cherry streetcar line heading south along Cherry, deep into the newly revitalized and redeveloped Portlands District. 
Also in the Portlands, a new east-west route will be built along Commissioner Street, connecting the current streetcar line at Leslie and Commissioners to the Cherry Street line while serving the east-west axis of a redeveloped Portlands district. Finally, a new north-south line will connect the current tracks along Broadview Avenue to the East Harbour development along with its new GO and Ontario line station before terminating on Commissioner Street in the Portlands. All in all, these new lines will all feature dedicated lanes and will build off the success of the Harbourfront streetcar route while developing the Portlands and Eastern Harbourfront as transit-oriented communities. Now of course, we can't forget to quickly mention the TTC's less appreciated rail yards which store and maintain our streetcars. In particular, we have the Roncesvalles Car House, the Hillcrest Facility, the Russell Car House, and the new Leslie Barnes, which is the largest and by far the newest of all the yards, purpose-built to store and maintain the TCC's new streetcars. It's worth noting that the Leslie Barnes actually sit at Leslie and Commissioner Street, which means that the new streetcar line here will provide some nice redundancy for the TTC's most important streetcar facility. When all is said and done, Toronto will have 7 rapid transit lines, 5 regional express rail lines, and 12 streetcar lines. From the current 75 stations and 8 yards, to the 115 stations and 10 yards, including current under construction projects, well past the golden 100 station marker, I might add, to over 140 stations and 13 rail yards currently planned. These numbers excite us immensely, and when all the extensions and expansion projects mentioned in this video are complete, Toronto will undeniably have a world-class transportation network, arguably the best in North America, and easily in the same league as the best networks globally in Europe and Asia. Thanks for watching guys! Of course, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a comment down below telling us what project you are most excited for. And as always, follow us on Instagram and Twitter for the latest. And as always guys, have a good one. Thank you.